Hi, so in this uh, lecture, I want to talk about uh, electrophilic addition reactions to alkenes. This is quite a broad subject, and in this lecture, I really want to give a bit of an overview of the types of reactions, and we'll, in later reactions, sort of flesh them out a little bit more and uh, make more sense of the individual types of reactions. But essentially what we're looking at is a terrible nucleophile in the form of an alkene. Um, and for the alkene to be a nucleophile, the only way that we're going to get this to react is with a very powerful electrophile. Now, the electrophile is going to come in many different formats. And at the moment, I'm just using a generic kind of example over here. We've got something which is the electrophilic portion. And then normally the electrophilic portion is kind of connected to something else that is going to, to leave. It's very general, but we'll uh, see how this works out. Uh, in terms of the, the reaction, um, there are three different kind of mechanisms that can take place. But essentially where we get to is a product that looks like where we've added uh, whatever our reagent is to our alkene. And so uh, we would often end up with something that looks uh, like this. All right, so I said there are three different types of, <clears throat> of mechanisms that might take place. Um, so let's look at one of uh, the, the first and most common type of uh, mechanisms, one that you've probably seen in, in undergrad. Uh, in this mechanism, we are going to take our lone, uh, our, not a lone pair, but the pi bond, and we're gonna add it to our electrophile and kick out our leaving group. So this is gonna leave and our leaving group is gonna leave like that. So we're adding, an, and now this electrophile is going to bond uh, to uh, this molecule over here. And in this first uh, type of mechanism, um, the electrophile that we have over here has an option of going to either one of those two carbons. Uh, just for simplicity, I'm just gonna show it going to this one, but we will have to flesh that out in another uh, lecture. And what we get is actually a carbocation intermediate uh, and this links to our elimination and substitution reactions and because that is a really powerful electrophile itself whatever the leaving group was this x which presumably left with a minus on it or lone pairs at the very least kicks in over there and we end up doing our addition reaction the other thing that this could do, depending on what this E is, and then which we'll, we will look at those examples, is that this first step that I've shown you over here is 100, still happens, but something kind of weird happens. This happens, this, what's going to happen now is when this electrophile is actually a little bit larger, uh, than this example here. I don't want to give it a secret away yet. Um, but, when this happens, the electrophile that's over here doesn't end up on just one of the carbon atoms, but it ends up over both. It makes a three-membered ring. And so the intermediate looks like this. Now, often, if you think about it, it just really depends a lot on, on what this electrophile looks like. But if we assume that this, this electrophile over here lost just one thing, uh, so it would uh, it only normally forms one bond, then you've now got two bonds to this. And so if you think about it, it's often gonna end up being a positively charged. Not always, but this is the type of thing that happens. Uh, it will depend on the electrophile. And then what happens next is our leaving group over here can now act as a nucleophile. It comes in and it gives us exactly the same type of product. And the last mechanism that can happen um, when we're adding a very powerful electrophile to an alkene and that the alkene is acting as a nucleophile uh, is really just a one-step reaction. So what's not happening here is we're not getting a carbocation, we're not getting a three-membered ring, but this is going to add to the alkene all in one step. And this is how we'd have to draw it out. So I'm going to have to start this because it's, uh, again, because it's going to, uh, it is slightly different in that starting step. So it would look like this. So in this mechanism, what happens is the pi bond adds to the electrophile like that. And instead of us forming a carbocation, this immediately adds back to the other carbon over there. And they, so it ends up being this one step reaction that occurs, not two steps like this, but just a one step reaction, which gives us exactly the same sort of product. All right, so we've got three different types of mechanisms. One, where we're forming a carbocation. Two, where we're forming a three-membered ring. 
and then opening up of that. And the third one is where they're adding on the same side, or they're adding together at the same time. Um, now, each of these, uh, we'll have to look at some examples. I'm going to do that now, just some prototypes. And then in the future lectures, we're going to look, uh, drill down really at, at lots of examples that involve this mechanism, lots of examples that have this mechanism. And then there's really just actually one small example that has this mechanism over here, or a couple of similar types of ones. Um, and we're going to see the, the outcomes, particularly things connected to stereochemistry. For instance, with this one over here, because it's adding at one time altogether, it means that the E and the X are going to, for instance, be on the same face. So they'll both be pointing up as an example over here. Whereas this one over here, we form a carbocation. So that means that it could be coming in from the top or the bottom. Doesn't matter about that. And this one over here also, you'll see, forms on one face, and that means that when this comes in and opens it up, it can often be like a, uh, an SN2 reaction, sometimes not, but we're going to look at that, um, and we could have the nucleophile coming in from behind. All right, so let's just look at some real examples of each of these. So this is really just a very classic example of the addition of an acid to an alkene. Um, the electrophile, a very powerful electrophile, would be a proton. A proton, uh, an electrophile is a Lewis acid, and a proton is a Bronsted acid, but they're acids. So uh, if we've got a very strong proton, we can protonate uh, an alkene, kick out the leaving group, and we end up with a carbocation. Now, I've specifically drawn this because we will go into a bit more details of this, but here we'll get a secondary carbocation, could have ended up on either one of the carbons because of the symmetrical, it makes a difference. And the BR minus can come back in and uh, add to it and give us our brominated product. All right, so this was first year chemistry and we'll again deal with all the um, uh, things that happen over here. Uh, the second example is one that where we form a three-membered ring, and this will be something new to those of you who are in my second year class, um, and it's the reagent is just pure bromine. Um, and the thing with pure bromine is because bromine is electronegative on both sides, um, just a little bit of, I'm going to say tickling here, just a little bit of a tickle on this can swing the the the, the charge density to, to either side. So if this is a, a very weak nucleophile, it just needs to approach this bromine. And what happens is as it tickles it, it throws the electrons to the other side. And so we have a good leaving group. So in, in a way, bromine becomes both a really good electrophile and it's got a really good leaving group on it at the same time. And this is the example of something that's going to form this three-membered ring. So what happens is we do that. And this is called a bromonium. And it's sort of stable um, intermediate. It's not something that's going to exist for very long. Um, and all that will happen now is that our BR minus that was present can then kick in and open that up over there. The fun part about this is that we don't have to use a BR minus. We could actually use another nuclear file. And that's what we'll explore in some further lectures. But this is a way of making uh, vicinal dibromides, so there are two of them on either side. And what we're going to discover with this is that the bromonium can only form on one face. Uh, it has to just add, it can't add in any funny way. Um, and because it adds on one face, uh, when the nucleophile comes in, it has to come in from the opposite side. It's an SN2 type of reaction. So this one would have been pointing down, and this one would have been pointing up like that. There's another reagent that we're going to learn about that does very similar thing. Um, it's going to make an epoxide, so where this is a, a, an oxygen, and the epoxides are extremely useful as well. So we'll be covering that in a future lecture. And then uh, the last one that we need to look at is a rather specialized uh, example of a reagent. Um, because it can do something really cool, it's why we're going to, uh, why we need to look at it. Um, but also this kind of reaction mechanism uh, applies to some other reagents as well, which we'll be looking at. Um, but something that typifies this one is the reaction of this with a molecule of borane. So, um, so this is BH3 uh, is borane. Um, and so borane is quite uh, interesting here because the boron itself is really very electrophilic. A boron with three 
hydrogens on it has this MTP orbital, and the MTP orbital is what makes boron often a really good Lewis acid. So the boron part of it is a really good Lewis acid. Um, and so what happens here is that we get a situation, I'm going to try and squeeze it in over here. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than I'm going to draw it out now. Just uh, be aware of this, that this thing can happen a number of times and we can, we'll, we'll explore this. Um, but what happens is the boron is the Lewis acid part and one of those hydrogens, if we, if we add our electrons to the boron, what happens is that we, we're adding electron density onto the boron, which means that the hydrogen suddenly becomes a bit more charged and it becomes more negative. And we're forming this plus over here as it adds on. So this immediately pops across and it wants to, uh, to add to, to that carbon. So you get this uh, one step uh, reaction. And we know it's one step again because of stereochemistry. Um, and so it adds on like that. And then this minus comes back and adds on like that over there. So we get overall, and we also know this happens from the same side. We get this boron, which ends up with BH2. And we've added the hydrogen to this one face uh, uh, over here. At this point, it makes no difference because the, well, the hydrogen that we added would have been facing up. There is, of course, another hydrogen that was there originally. So the one that we added up was on the on the same face. Um, uh, this intermediate over here is actually not what makes this reaction quite cool, um, and we'll deal with it in, in later uh, lectures. But the, the key thing here is that what we do next, and I'm not going to show the mechanism of it, is that we add hydrogen peroxide. Uh, with some base, so sodium hydroxide, something like that. And what that does is that it oxidizes this boron, so it puts on an oxygen, some weird stuff happens, some bonds move around. Again, we're not going to deal with that. I just need you to know that when we add these reagents, we change basically this boron into an alcohol. Um, and this turns out to be a really nice way of introducing alcohols, uh, and the stereochemistry stays the same, by the way. Um, and it's a nice way of putting an alcohol onto a uh, onto an alkene. Um, and so this is an important one. So in all of these steps over here, we're in the future lecture, what we're going to be looking at is we need to make sure that we understand um, all the little tricks that happen over here. This one is going to form a carbocation, and carbocations are going to be important features over here. The stability of the carbocation is going to be important, and that's going to affect the regioselectivity of how these reactions occur. Over here, we're going to see how the the three-membered ring has to be on one particular face, and that's going to have stereochemical implications. So we have to ask ourselves, when the nucleophile comes in and opens up this three-membered ring, how does that happen, and does the, is the stereochemistry uh, conserved? And so we'll look at that as well. And then lastly, in these sorts of reactions over here, stereochemistry is also important. Um, this is a new reagent for you. These two are new, and there's going to be a couple of others. Um, but this new reagent adds just from one... Um, uh, one face and then gets oxidized. This this overall reaction over here is is normally uh, uh, called uh, hydroboration, followed by oxidation. Um, and we're going to use, learn some funny things out. So just watch out. It's hydroboration. There's the hydrogen and the boron is the the pink bit over there. So hydroboration followed by oxidation. This is the uh, oxidant over there, hydrogen peroxide. Um, and we get the, the alcohol and we'll deal with that um, later.